Okay, guys, we're out here today. We've, we've built up our corner post here. We sunk this in. We've got it cemented in about four foot deep in the ground. Uh, these are light poles we can buy from our uh, local light pole company. They cut them off in five foot increments. And uh, you have to get a 10 foot pole. When you get it, you can't get an eight foot one or a six foot one. It's either five foot or 10 foot. And they cut everything in 10 foot lengths. And they're real economical to buy. They're cheaper than buying fence posts. This fence post cost me the same amount of money as this little fence post did at the store and I know that's ridiculous but that's the way it is and then we took some old posts we had around we built these cross members in here what we're fixing to do is we're fixing to take some I call it horse wire it doesn't have any barbs on it uh, this slick wire right here and we're going to um, we're going to use this to make our steel cross bracing in this so that when we pull it it doesn't uh, the post doesn't give. Uh, we're going. We'll show you how we do that. Now, I literally, I start up here at the top. I always like to start up here when I uh, when I begin. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to unroll this, and I'm going to put me a couple of. I put me a staple end up here to hold it. I don't do that the way a lot of people does it. A lot of people wraps it around and they put a stick or something in between it and they twist it to tighten it up. I don't do that. Because to me, that can come loose. I would rather do mine differently. I do mine where it will not come loose. Now, these are all farm tools we use in here. This is not our good home working tools. I like to get this up pretty high because the higher it is, the, the stronger it'll be. Now I'll let that stay down there like that. Then what I'll do is I'll just unroll this. And I'll take this all the way down to the bottom of the pole down here. And I'm gonna nail it again. Make sure we get a good bend on this or try to keep this about as straight as I can get it. And I'll go all the way to the bottom. I, I usually try to keep it pretty tight. Not real, real tight, but, but decent now. Here, we're going to take this and just kind of, we're not going to drive it down tight just yet. I'm going to stop right before I get it tight. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a crowbar. I use a long crowbar for this. Now, I don't, it doesn't have to be real, real tight for this side. But I'll kind of pull it a little bit tight. And I'll go ahead and drive that in. Now, you don't want to cut the wire with it, but the staple. But make sure you get it in there good and tight. And I'll unroll it back. I like using the slick wire for this because you don't have to deal with barbs like on a barbed wire or something. And I'll make it just a little bit longer than it needs to be here. And I'll show you why in just a minute. When I let's see, I think about about like this might do it. You don't want to cut it too short though. Better for it to be too long than too short. These are this, this wire here is some stiff wire. That's why I want them lineman pliers to cut it with. Okay, then we'll come back. I take my hammer and make sure I'm good and snug against that post. And I'll bring this wire down here. And I start wrapping it. Like so. And then when I get back up here to the top, I'll go back and take my crowbar again. 
and I'll try to hook on to this. I like to pull it good and tight. Sometimes you can bump this with a hammer. What that does is that takes a lot of the slack out. Get me a staple ready here. We're going to try it one more time, make sure we got it good and tight. Okay, that should be it. And I'll come back and I'll put a staple over this, over both of them this time. Instead of just one, I'll put over both. Then I'll take these ends a lot of times and I'll Take my pliers and bring them back around. And if they're long enough, I'll tuck them in. Now I'll do the same thing on this other side. This can get to, it can be a little bit tricky and it's hard because this wire is so stiff. But if you can get it to to tuck in behind there. Get it where you can get a hold to it. To I kind of like to pull it down like that, and then I can bring it up. And it's almost like it's almost like doing a little twist on it. That way, it kind of saves you, and it takes a couple more staples. Then I can come back. This kind of ensures that this wire is not going to slip. And I'll put one back on this side. And some people even put one into here. I don't think it's necessary because I got it locked in a saddle there. Now this is very tight. It's not going to give. And way it's down into here, it's not going to give down there. We're going to go ahead and do the one for the other side. And then we'll start working on our fence.
one thing guys be very careful if this end of this wire doesn't come back and slap you in the face and hit you in the eye always keep your hands on it at all times Right. Staple deer. Okay guys, you always want to pull from your bottom to the top. That way when you're pulling against this fence, pulling it tight, you're pulling against the bottom of that post right there and that will keep your fence from actually giving when you pull on it. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.